Hello, and welcome to the Difficult Airway Pathway Education Package, Module Number 4. We are going to explore Plan D, which is our front of neck access for emergency surgical airway, uh, the final common pathway for us when we can't intubate and cannot oxygenate the patient. As always, you can send your questions to shira.starfish at gmail.com or you can contact any of the members of the committee with your questions or concerns. So let's review. We've gone through plan A where we've tried to intubate the patient. We've gone through plan B where we've tried to oxygenate the patient through a scuperglottic airway device and failed. We've gone through plan C where we've tried two person bagging of the patient with an oral airway. We've added some paralysis to try to get oxygenation and maybe obliterate some laryngospasm. We still haven't been able to get oxygenated to the patient. We're now coming on four minutes and we really need to get some oxygen to this patient. We've gone into a dire situation where we can intubate, can oxygenate this patient, and we must move on to plan D. We need rescue front and back access so that we can use a emergency surgical airway technique of which we're gonna advocate a an open cricothyrotomy using a scalpel bougie endotracheal tube technique. So the key elements in plan D, if you haven't called for help, you need to do that now. It's going to require a couple of individuals in order to, to do this working together. One person trying to oxygenate the patient from the top while the other person is doing this actual technique. So remember, we are going to try to keep oxygenating this patient while we're getting ready to go at the front of the neck and secure a surgical airway. We are going to use a scalpel bougie endotracheal tube. And once we have that um, endotracheal tube in place, we're going to get ENT involved because they're going to need to follow this patient uh, with respect to converting over to a traditional tracheostomy tube. And of course, this patient is going to really need to go to the ICU. So what are our steps? Well, our first thing that we're going to do is something called a laryngeal handshake. We're going to use our index finger and our thumb. We're going to grasp the top of the larynx. And we're going to roll it from side to side that we can clearly identify it. And to help you out, this isn't a cone shape. Panel B in the middle, you can see that we're going to slide our fingers down till we find the thyroid component. And then we're gonna use our middle finger and thumb resting on either side of that cricoid, cart cricoid cartilage. And that in index finger is gonna palpate that soft spot, that little divot in between the uh, cricoid cartilage and the thyroid uh, cartilage. So our steps involved here involve uh, number one, which is our laryngeal handshake that I just uh, spoke to you about where you're gonna uh, find the larynx, shake it from side to side, bring your finger down, find the cricothyroid membrane, you're then going to move on to step two, and you're going to do a direct stab um, transverse across the front of the neck through the cricothyroid membrane. Rotate the scalpel 90 degrees with the sharp point uh, towards the toes. Then you're going to gently rock the scalpel back towards the chin, and uh, that helps open up the incision. You're going to slide the bougie down alongside that using the scalpel for stability. You're going to take out the blade and you're going to railroad a number six endotracheal tube down into the trachea using a corkscrew motion if you need to. One of the very important things I want you to look closely at these five pictures is there is a mask on that patient. That's because someone is on um, at the top of the bed, head of the bed, uh, trying to uh, oxygenate your patient the entire time that this uh, preparation and procedure is actually going on. So it's really important for you to remember. Uh, that at all phases, including D, we are still trying to oxygenate our patient uh, throughout this uh, uh, difficult uh, situation. If we have an opportunity uh, to use ultrasound and we're skilled at it, or having a bit of difficulty identifying the cricothyroid membrane, you can use ultrasound. And we have three panels here. The first one on the left actually shows the um, cricothyroid membrane with the ultrasound probe, which is a high frequency transducer placed. Uh, vertically um, in the uh, mid sag plane and it's scanning the area that's marked in the middle that's a real-time image um, on the right hand side is the structures that you're actually looking at I clearly identified from the scanned image in the middle so the green is the thyroid cartilage the dark blue is the cricoid cartilage the nice um, light blue are our tracheal rings which look like little pearls on the um, real-time image. The tissue air border is that outline on the bottom that's in orange and then the thyroid gland is actually above those uh, tracheal rings um, 
from the pearls uh, in dark brown. And then the area that we're actually looking for is that cricothyroid membrane. So that's the area between the thyroid cartilage and the cricoid cartilage. And that's the membrane that you're uh, aiming for. So what are we going to need for equipment? Well, we need a scalpel, a bougie, and an endotracheal tube. And we have conveniently put this together for you in something called a stab bag so that you could reach into the bottom drawer, which is clearly labeled Plan D, and pull out that scalp uh, um, stab bag. And we have a you can palpate it, you're going to do it the technique just as I described. Laryngeal handshake, index finger on the cricothyroid membrane, stabilize the larynx, stab through, transverse incision in the cricothyroid membrane, rotate the scalpel 90 degrees, rock the blade back, open that incision up, put the bougie in, take the scalpel out, railroad the number six endotracheal tube. And of course, confirm that with capnography and auscultation. Um, if you can't palpate the cricothyroid membrane, then what you actually need to do is uh, do a vertical incision, 8 to 10 centimeters from head to toe, and you're going to blunt dissect down that tissue so that you can clearly identify the cricothyroid membrane, and then use the same technique that was just described. So why are we advocating this emergency surgical airway technique? Well, Placement of a wide board tube through that cricothyroid membrane really allows us to have normal minute ventilation using a standard breathing system. We don't need any fancy setups. We don't need any fancy connectors. It's quick and easy. We don't have to put in a throat pack like we traditionally would have to do if you're using a standard needle cricothyroidomy kit that uh, um, puts in a short uh, tube that looks a little bit like a tracheostomy tube without the cuff. Um, if you're successful in getting that in, there's no seal. You have to put in a throat pack in order to be able to oxygenate and ventilate your patient. We know that if you use a narrow bore, uh, bore cannula, either a standard angio, uh, uh, angio cath and jet ventilation, that there's a lot of morbidity and mortality associated with that. Uh, particularly with the standard angio cath, those can shred and cause um, severe um, injury to the trachea and uh, the, um, the lungs. In our traditional percutaneous techniques, whether we use a needle, and a guide wire and some overwiring uh, fails over 60% of the time. The NAT4 database clearly showed us that. When you compare and contrast that to open surgical techniques, those were almost 100% successful. And so they're actually advocating um, this technique and they have modified their difficult airway algorithm for uh, the United Kingdom um, using this technique. And they actually teach everybody this technique because it's simple, it's fast, it's easily taught, it's easily translatable. And most of all, it actually does work. So we're going to go through um, a couple of videos that demonstrate the, this, te this technique. Hi, folks. Ross here from Open Airway. I'm in the UCT Anesthesia Airway Skills Lab. And I want to go over in this short video the Difficult Airway Society's 2015 Guidelines Surgical Airway Technique. Now, I'm not going to go into the debate about needle versus surgical uh, cricothyroidotomy. Also, not going to go into the debate about scalpel finger bougie, scalpel bougie tube. I'm just going to demonstrate the DAS technique on this mannequin. So obviously, we're going to be in a con intubate, con oxygenate scenario. We're going to have trial or other options and recognize that we're unable to oxygenate this patient without going to front of neck access. The equipment that I need for this procedure is I'm going to need a scalpel. DAS recommend a size 10 blade, but use what you have immediately at hand. I'm going to need a, a bougie. You want a Kudai tipped bougie and preferably a hollow core bougie if you've got it so that you can oxygenate uh, as an intermediate step if necessary. And you want a size 6 standard endotracheal tube immediately at hand. Right, so to do, perform the technique, we are going to do the laryngeal handshake. Feel the larynx and make sure that we've got the cartilages in our fingers. Feel down in the midline with my finger and identify the thyroid and cricoid cartilages and the cricothyroid membrane. If I cannot feel the cartridges clearly at this stage because of a patient with a thick edematous or, or uh, fat neck, I'm going to make a vertical incision in the midline and blunt dissect with my fingers until I can feel the cartridges. If I can immediately feel the cartridges, I'm going to make a vertical stab incision through the cricothyroid membrane. Remember that you want to do this vertically so that you have got the wide, broad cartilage part of the cricoid behind the tip of the blade. I'm then going to turn the blade sideways. Now at this stage, I like to work with my dominant hand. I'm going to swap hands, and using the tip of the bougie, I'm going to pass it down the trachea, and it should move freely. I can now remove my scalpel and make it safe. Confirm that my bougie is moving freely. 
If I've got a hollow core bougie, I can already auction into the stage. Otherwise, I'm going to connect and railroad my size 6 tube with a slight screwing motion if I have to to get it to go in, just until it's into the trachea. Out comes my bougie, and now I can connect and oxygenate the patient and inflate the cuff, etc. So, that is the Difficult Airway Society's 2015 guidelines on performing a surgical cricothyroidotomy. And what if we can't palpate the cricothyroid membrane? Well, as described in the uh, preceding video, you're actually going to use a vertical incision um, going from head to toe, 8 to 10 centimeters, and you're going to use your fingers to actually bluntly dissect away that tissue so that you can clearly identify the cricothyroid membrane and, of course, identify and stabilize the larynx. And then use the same technique that you would uh, if you could palpate it, the only difference being is that you're using this vertical incision so you have better visualization to actually see your structures to know where to place your blade to access the cryocathyroid membrane. Watch closely with this. There's a video laryngoscopy being done. You'll be able to see the blade passing into the trachea. Send a tracheal tube. Okay. I'll hold the bougie. Boom, you're done. Okay. I mean, you're down, probably down far. All you need to do is get below that. So, never done this before, I presume. No. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, didn't bat an eye. This was, you know, really, really, really well done. So in summary, our plan D involves emergency front of neck access for a emergency surgical airway with the technique that we're advocating and teaching all of you, which is the scalpel bougie endotracheal tube. Um, this is a proven open surgical technique that is, uh, you know, used for rapid access uh, of the airway under these really um, dire situations of can't intubate, can't oxygenate your patient. We are not advocating any uh, needle cricothyroidomy. Uh, for our adult population. Um, it is still frontline for our PEDS population, which we'll discuss in module six. And remember that if you can to palpate your cricothyroid membrane, that we're advocating a vertical incision and blunt dissection till you find that cricothyroid membrane so that you can easily um, place the um, uh, tube in the right position. And of course, once you secure that, you need uh, ENT to be involved um, and the patient needs to guys go to the ICU. So that's it for module four. I know that's a little bit intimidating. However, um, I think it's a very useful and important skill set. You'll get an opportunity to practice that in the sim lab. And really, um, I think you'll find that this is uh, something that translates well and is easy for you to uh, pick up. We'll see you in module five.